All right. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I think enough people are here. We can go ahead and start this thing. Like I said, be very respectful of their time. First off, Justin, I just want to say thanks yeah. for inviting me to speak to your community. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'll go ahead. We'll kick it off. And um, Rick's got a lot of great stuff to talk about. So welcome, everybody. Uh, Justin from Jam Mob here. I really want to, you know, I want to welcome you guys to this super special live event. We've got a really special guest with us today. Uh, how many of you guys have heard of Taylor Swift? Well, She's not here today, uh, as you can see, but we got somebody better because, you know, at least if you're serious about having a su successful music career, this guy is definitely the guy you want to talk to. Uh, this is Taylor Swift's former manager. He's got a ton of experience working with famous artists, world famous artists. He's got a massive amount of knowledge to share with you. And he hosts a uh, actually hosts a podcast called the Music Industry Blueprint Podcast, which is where I, we first connected. We had me on a couple of years ago. Um, and he also just works um, really hands on with a lot of indie artists, help them navigate the music industry and develop their careers. And that's why he's here today. He's got some serious knowledge bombs to drop on you guys. So I'm super excited to have him here. I'd like to introduce you guys to the one and only Rick Barker. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yes. OK, a little virtual <laughs> applause there. There's a round of applause going on in the uh, chat box right now, too. That's it. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and. Uh... I'm going to go ahead and mute Justin here for a second, and he may pop back in here in a second. But uh, first off, there's a couple things that we're going to talk about today. First thing is this, is that I love the fact that people can learn from various folks. I always tell folks, you cannot get a degree from one book and one instructor. And Justin and I have the same mission. And that mission is to empower the indie artists to be self-sufficient. Uh, the things that I focus on solely is how to build, nurture, and monetize your fan base. So today what I'm going to do is I've got a couple different things. Uh, we're going to do some video stuff. I've got uh, a PowerPoint presentation that I want to share with you, and it's going to be very interactive. So let me explain how the chat works. If you only want me to see the chat or Justin to see the chat, set your comments in the chat to panelist. That means only Justin and I can see it. If a comment comes in panelist, I may you know state your answer but I won't give up your name. So we'll, we'll give you that privacy there. If you don't mind, if everyone sees it, you can set your uh, situation to panelists and attendees. All right, so real quick, let just tell me if you can see this PowerPoint. If you can see this PowerPoint, let me know inside of the chat. Great, you can hear us perfect. You can see us perfect, awesome. Now, there will be a Q&A at the end. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So if you can save your questions to the end, that would be great. If you come in and you raise your hand, I'm not ignoring you. I just won't be going to that feature right now because like I said, I want to be very respectful of everyone's time. So let's go ahead real quick and we're going to jump into this. It's called How to Build a Following of Real Fans in Under an Hour Per Day so that you can finally get paid for your music. Now, before we go any further, I want you to take this object that's practically another body part, we call it the phone, and go ahead and put it on mute and set it aside. The reason being is that we're going to move real fast, but there's going to be some takeaways that you can use immediately in your career today. Okay, so I want you to understand that you're going to have the ability to watch this replay. If you're watching it on the replay, uh, the chat feature does not work, so just nod your head. If we ask a question or you agree, give us that virtual fist pump. Once again, uh, if your hands are up, I will come to you at the end with questions. We're going to save that until the end. So real quick, who is this presentation for? This presentation is for anyone who understands that this is a business. It's also for those that are willing to put in the work. And if you are here today, this is definitely you. You understand that there's things that you don't know. You understand that there's things that you probably should be doing. My goal today is to point you in the right direction. And I also want you to understand that this is for those who understand that it takes time. No one woke up with an audience. Uh, everyone had to start from somewhere. Okay, so this is going to take time. Anyone that tries to offer you uh, get rich quick or anything like that, go ahead and run from that person because they obviously don't understand the business that we're in today. So who is this not for? Anyone who thinks that they can build a business without making financial investments. 
you are in the music business. For any successful business, you've got to be able to make investments in your business. The key is making sure that you're making the right investments. Those of you that are maybe just hobbyists or fame seekers, you think that you're going to learn something today that's going to make you famous. Unfortunately, there's no strategy for that. There's no course for that. A lot of people in the world are famous for the wrong reason. So if that's what you're looking for, you could possibly slip out now and make room for someone who uh, takes this a little more serious. I just once again want to be respectful of your time to let you know right away who this isn't for. And it's for anyone who's unwilling to change and adapt to the new music business. So real quick, let me ask you this question. How many of you realize that social media is not going anywhere? Social media is here to stay. Social media right now is the fastest and easiest way to get your message in front of an audience. If you agree with that statement, go ahead and let me know in the chat box. I know for a long time, many musicians were like, crap, I just wish we could get back to creating music. Well, when that was the case, there were restrictions. You had to either be signed to a label that got you the radio exposure that you needed in order to get heard. You needed to be with a hot manager or a hot agent, somebody that could get you out on tour. Who remembers the days where the only time you were able to hear music was usually a couple different ways? One, you heard it on the radio, which eliminated most indie artists. Two, you saw music at a live show, so you were kind of limited to the people that were in your region that you were able to see. Or maybe a friend grabbed a CD back when they had those things called CDs. For those of you that don't know what a CD is, ask your parents. Uh, they'll share with you what that was. Maybe somebody shared a CD with you. Maybe they bought a, a CD at, at their local college and brought it home with them. But those were pretty much the only ways that we were able to get our music in front of people. Well, what the internet did is the internet did a lot of different things. One, I've got this cool magic whiteboard that I'm going to share with you. So the first thing that the internet did was it opened the world. What the internet did is it showed us that there are people all over the world that are talented. How many of you, you don't have to say this, I just want you to think this for a second. How many of you when you heard somebody on the radio inside your brain said, man, my music's just as good as theirs. I'm sure a good portion of you. Okay. A lot of you may have just sat there and said, why is that guy on stage? I'm a much better performer than they are. Well, they had access to the gatekeepers. The internet eliminated, eliminated, I don't have spell check on my pen, the gatekeepers. The internet, what I love about it is it is not prejudice, okay? It does not care what country you're in. It does not care how much you weigh. It does not care what you look like. It does not care what your economic background is. The internet allowed the best music to get itself out into the world. But what it didn't guarantee was that your music was going to get heard. So today, that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on how do you take what you have and get it in front of people that potentially could be your fans. So those are just a few of the things that I loved about the internet. The internet made it available for me, like what's happening today. I'm able to get my message to people from all over the world. You now have the ability to get your music heard by people all over the world. So let's uh, go back into the PowerPoint presentation and we will continue. So just got this email recently. Thanks, Rick. You're amazing. So I bought your social media course and have spent the past six months putting into practice everything that you discuss. I'm British, but gaining a loyal US following. The game changer for me is live streaming. I'm making around 500 to 1,000 a month from the virtual tip jar. That's one of the strategies that I teach and I'll share with you here in just a little bit. Plus, I'm now merchandising. Definitely considering working with you closer if possible. How many of you would be okay getting the knowledge that you need to start generating between 500 to $1,000 a month? 
basically $6,000 to $12,000 a year. If you would be okay with those kind of results by just getting some knowledge, but more importantly, putting that knowledge into action, and we'll talk more about that in a second, let me know if you'd be okay with that. Would this make a difference in your career today if you had the ability to start generating after just a few months of getting the knowledge to be able to do that? Okay, most people say yes. Now, the question that I ask you is what would you be willing to invest in yourself to get that kind of knowledge that would allow you the ability to start generating that kind of income? What would that investment look like to you? What would be something that you would spend if someone came to you and said, I can show you how with the right music, you can generate this. What would you be okay spending? All right. I see 300 bucks, 400 bucks. Somebody said 500 because then I can duplicate it. Okay. What if I told you that all that Ross invested in himself, I like this, I'm a teenager. So 100 to 150. What if I told you that all of this information Ross had access to, he attended the same exact presentation that you're on today and all he had to invest was $97. Is $97 worth it to you to learn how to get your business set up properly to start generating income? Okay, if the answer is no, then this is probably the wrong presentation for you. So basically what Ross decided is that his career was worth 26 cents a day for one year. If you do not believe in you, yourself, or your music, that it's worth a 26 cent a day investment, this is probably the wrong business for you. And you're probably more on that hobbyist part. Okay. So there is no voucher code that's available. But what's going to happen is at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of stuff that you can start using today. And then I'm going to make an offer. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get access to the same exact tools that Ross had access to. Okay. So know that that's coming. I don't want any surprises. So what I, what I, the analogy that I like to use is my job for the next 45 minutes to an hour is to perform well enough so that you want to come to the merch table. Okay. Just like when you get on stage, your goal is to put on a good enough show where people saw something where they want to learn more about how they can get involved with you. Okay. That's how we're going to do that. Somebody says, is it $97, $95 a year? No, he paid $97 one time. Here's an email I just got from Elliot. I had to send you a personal thank you for teaching how to register with Sound Exchange. Yesterday, I received 16,000 in unclaimed royalties for my music being out there in the world over the last 10 years. Had it not been for my investment in your program, I would have never known how to go about claiming royalties. Feels so good to have my music finally paying me back for a change. Is it worth 26 cents a day to get the information that you need to make sure that your business is set up properly so that you can go out and collect what is rightfully yours? The part that sucks about the music business, let me just go ahead and throw this out there right now. Your rewards are not in direct proportion to the work that you put in, which sucks. Right now, the audience has the ability to listen to your music and consume your product for free. So how many businesses would survive if the consumer could walk in and just take what was ever in the store and walk out? Think about that. If someone could just walk into a business and take, how long would those businesses survive? They wouldn't. So ultimately, if the music's free, they can watch your videos for free. How are you monetizing music? It's through the relationships. And that's what we're going to focus on today is finding the right audience to get them to get into the relationship part of the business with you. So my agenda today is simple. In our small amount of time, I'm going to share with you three secrets. Secret number one is how to find your audience on social media. Secret number two is what platforms that you should be using to find your audience. You don't have to be everywhere. Secret number three, how to interact and engage with your new fans in under an hour a day. When I do surveys and I ask people, what's your biggest frustration when it comes to social media? The number one frustration every single time 
is time. Rick, I don't have time. Okay. How many of you have seen, can tell me what this means? Okay. Let's talk about that for a second. In the chat, let me know if you know what that means. Yeah, time is money. How many agree with that? Time is money. Yep. Time is money. How many agree? You agree? Okay. What if I told you that that statement was false? What would you think then? Because if time is money, what this should say is time is greater than money. Once that is gone, we can't replenish it. We only get a certain amount of time in our life. We can always make more money. We can't make more time. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I mean by that? Time is more valuable than money. But what happens is people start trying everything that I invest in, and I'm an investor. I invest in courses. I invest in trainings. I invest in coaching. Everything that I invest this in is to get more of this. What I learned early on is if I can go to somebody who's already an expert, they have already made the mistakes. They have already seen the process. They have already done everything. So time is greater than money. And my goal and my job is to make sure that you're doing everything in the shortest amount of time possible to get the result that you need. All right. So let's get rid of that. And let's jump back in here. And I'm glad everybody understands now because that's a, that's a big thing right now is people are always sitting there spending, they're trying to save money. And by trying to save money, it's costing them time. And I'm like, no, it's backwards. And trust me, I felt the same way. I did everything myself for so long. I, I can watch thousands of YouTube videos, just like all of you can, or I can go to the guy that created the YouTube videos and say, hey, what will it cost me to hire you for an hour to teach me everything that you know? or whatever that case may be. So we're gonna show you how to interact and engage with your fans in under an hour a day. I call this the customer service part of your business. And if you don't have an hour a day for this part, once again, you may want to rethink why things are happening the way they are. Plus as a bonus, I'm gonna let you see firsthand that it is possible to build a fan base. That'll provide you the financial means to do music full-time. Finally prove to yourself that you have, what you have created has value. And one more bonus, if you're okay with that, I'm going to show you how to tap into the largest daily gathering of people in the world to expose your music and get paid every time in the process. Yet, if nothing else, I'm going to open your eyes to the possibilities that are in front of you right now. Everything that I teach, I'm using in my business and my clients are using in their business. I am not going to share with you theory I'm not going to share with you what I think might could happen. I'm going to share with you what is going on. I only like to deal in reality. If you want theory, <clears throat> go to college. You know, they're teaching you theory. Most of them aren't able to teach you what's happening now because things change so fast. I'm also going to show you examples of indie artists just like you who are making money doing exactly what I'm going to share with you today. How to avoid the pitfalls that most artists and musicians make that could jeopardize your success when it comes to posting and engaging on social media. But here's what I need from you. I need implementation because nothing would pain me more than to see you still struggling a few months from now, despite having a solution. <clears throat> now, I've made some pretty bold claims. What makes me sure that you're going to know exactly what to do? What makes me sure that I can deliver to you? Because this is what I do every single day. So why should you listen to me? I've been in the business now a little over 30 years. My online programs have helped thousands of artists all over the world start making money with their music. I've consulted major labels like Big Machine and Sony Records, and I helped launch the career of superstar Taylor Swift. Uh, so what, what that means basically is that I know what it is that I'm doing. Polestar recently wrote this, Swift has had plenty of people who can lay claim to her success from the executives of Big Machine Records to two major agencies and a sharp promoter to an active publicity network to her own mom and dad. But back in 2007, when we talked to her then manager, Rick Barker, 
It was Barker who built a business plan that seemed concise, but just really hard to do. It laid the groundwork for what Swift would become when Barker was the West Coast Regional for Big Machine Records. He told Swift that if she wanted to sell 500,000 albums, she'd need to meet 500,000 people. She said he was the first one to ever say that to me, and it sunk in. The cool part today is that you have more resources than Taylor and I had. When we first started, we only had MySpace. That's right. There was this little program called MySpace where we could interact with the fans. You mostly had to get on big stages in order to reach those people. MySpace came along. Now you have more tools. After that, I went on to become the social media mentor for the American Idol contestants. My job was to teach them how to take advantage of that $10 million commercial that they were going to get and prepare them to become an artist. And I'm the only person right now teaching social media that's verified on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I don't say that to brag. The only reason that I tell you that is I think it's super important that you understand who you're getting your information from. There's a lot of people out there, some really good marketers that will read a book and then write a book about the book they just read. They will try to sell you a course on getting a publishing deal when they've never gotten anyone a publishing deal themselves. Also co-authored a great book, The $150,000 Music Degree, uh, feature keynote speaker at various music conferences. Like Justin said earlier, I've got a podcast, and I'm also an adjunct professor at uh, Belmont University here in the music business department. What an adjunct professor is, is that someone who gets brought in to talk about their area of expertise. Mine is usually in the digital marketing space, the social media space, and in the management space. And basically, in a nutshell, I know my stuff. But what I'm most proud of right now is the thousands of indie artists who use the exact same strategies that I'm about to show you and are making money with their music. The clients that I work with come in all ages, shapes, sizes, backgrounds, different genres of music. You're going to learn more about some of these artists here in just a little bit. One of my, my current clients, uh, Peepo, if you watch the TV show Songland, if you don't YouTube it, you'll love it. He actually won his episode, got a chance to work with Ryan Tedder and had his song uh, cut by Louis Fonzi. And his time now from the show has been up. Now we've been able to put together a strategy for him to go out and promote that show. So after watching this training, you're going to know how to find the most engaged fans to hear your music, what platforms are the fastest way to turn fans into loyal followers, how to turn your live videos into your personal ATM, seriously, start making money instantly, a lot like what Ross talked about. The one thing that I tell everyone that I work with that I'm 100% certain that it would change their outlook and put them on a success trajectory, yet everyone seems to ignore this. So who agrees with this statement? Knowledge is power. Okay, I'm going to open up the chat here a second. Who agrees with this statement? Knowledge is power. Have you heard this one before? Okay. Yep, me. Yep. Okay. I love what Ricardo just said. Sorry, Ricardo, I said your name and you said this to only panelists, but I want to bring and I want to acknowledge Ricardo and Menno. Here is what is the true statement. Knowledge with action is power. That's right. Knowledge with action. It's not what you know. It's what you do with what you know. There's a lot of very smart people who are broke. It's because all they did was fill their brains with a bunch of stuff, but they never went out and put it into action. So I also promised that I would share with you some of the strategies that are now outdated. I'm going to, some of you are going to get so excited when I tell you some of these things because you're like, woohoo, finally, I don't have to do this. Number one is you no longer have to post multiple times a day on all platforms. There was a time when that's how you were judged by how much consistent quantity of stuff you put out every single day. Even a couple of years ago, I was teaching, you know, give them something in the morning, give them something at lunch, give them something at dinner. You know, we were going through this whole opportunity multiple times a day on Facebook, Instagram, and things like that. Who remembers the day when you could post and almost all of your followers saw your post? Those were the good old days. I absolutely remember them. And then what happened is that all of a sudden, Facebook and Instagram said, wait a minute, you're, you're posting 
but not as many people are engaging. We're letting everyone see it, but most people are not engaging with it. So we're going to have to limit what we show of yours to these people that have proven that they're not really interested in what it is that you have to do. The biggest problem at the time is no one was teaching artists how to engage. They were just posting. A lot of times it was the marketing department at a label that would post or, and don't raise your hand or don't acknowledge this, but some people were guilty of only posting about themselves. Look at me, vote for me, do for me. Watch my five minute video and tell me what you think. Well, that is not engaging. Okay, that's basically like a person that just shows up and just talks about themselves all the time. We don't like that person in our life. I don't want you to be that person online. So having to post multiple times a day, there's only two places right now where multiple times benefits you. That's in Instagram stories and that's on TikTok. But it's on TikTok if you want to be an influencer on TikTok. Most of you just want to be artists so you can get away with posting once a day or once every couple of days on TikTok. But those are the only places where you need to post multiple times. The other reason that we wanted to post multiple times was that because we only see your posts. Most people don't go to your social platform. They wait for it to show up in their feed. So if you only posted at eight o'clock in the morning and I didn't get a chance to go on your on my Facebook till five, there's no way that I was going to scroll all the way back to see that post at eight. So that's why we posted multiple times a day. But now that the reach has been eliminated, and if you ultimately want to get reach, you're going to have to buy. That's where ads come into play. Uh, That's the only way that you can guarantee that your message gets seen by the right person. But posting multiple times a day, that's gone. Also, the follow for follow. It used to be, now there's restrictions. So like on Instagram, for example, you're limited to 7,500 followers. Okay, so the follow for follow may not work. I've got, you know, 40 something thousand people that follow me on Instagram. I'm not allowed to follow 40,000 people. I'm allowed to do that on Twitter, but Facebook, you're not even allowed to follow people. So that strategy of follow for follow and then unfollowing people, it was getting tedious. You know, people are like, oh my gosh, I, I hate having to do that. Well, the good news is you don't have to do that anymore. Also, too, utilizing a bunch of hashtags. Now, Instagram is going to give you the ability to have 30 hashtags. I'm not a fan of that anymore, and I'll tell you why. And this is just my opinion. When we work so hard to get someone, the reason that hashtags were important in the beginning stages of Instagram is that just allowed you another place to get discovered. But right now, some of the hashtags that you're using have 90 million followers of that hashtag. So that means what's the chances of you getting discovered if there's 90 million other people that have posted in that hashtag? What I suggest you do is you start your own hashtag for you so that when people click on it, everything is about you. But if you use the hashtag singer songwriter and there's 50 million people, if someone just, they finally saw your post, they said, shoot, I'm going to go check out. And the first thing that you do is you have a hashtag and they click on it. They've now left. Now they're being introduced to whoever else is over there. They may or may not come back to you. So what I don't want you doing is sending people away. It's hard enough to get their attention in the first place. Don't send them away from you. Everything should be about you. That's the place where I want you to be very selfish. Uh, So yeah, have a couple hashtags that might be relevant, but don't utilize the 30 hashtags anymore, especially if that's the first thing that they can do is click away. Also, too, stay away from this. Do not buy likes. Do not buy followers. Do not buy plays on Spotify. Okay, that's false engagement. And false engagement is very misleading. If your goal is to get the attention of a label or get the attention of a promoter so that maybe you can open up for an artist, showing them false numbers is just flat out lying. And what's going to happen, and this mistake got made, a long time ago is after Justin Bieber had success, all of a sudden, every label was signing every kid that had a million views on Instagram or on uh, YouTube. But what happened was, is that a lot of those views could be bought. So they've caught wind to that. So the last thing, if you're trying to build a relationship with someone, you don't want to start a relationship with someone if that relationship is built on lies. Buying false engagement is that. 
Okay. So if you've done it in the past, no harm, no foul, just in the future going forward. Let's make sure that every bit of your engagement is legit. I would much rather see someone with, you know, 300 followers who's got 35, you know, comments on a post. That's more impressive to me because that's a huge conversion value. That's a huge percentage of people that saw it, engaged with it. That's more important to me than somebody who's got a million followers and has two likes. And we've all seen those pages. So let's stay away from that. So let's go ahead and jump in to our first secret. Sorry, I clapped and scared my dog. Uh, Bo loves to come hang out with me here. So if you see something and I look at and I reach down, I kind of rub my leg. That's because he wants some attention. Secret number one is finding your audience. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to find your audience? Step number one is you want to follow the engaged fans of an artist or band that you feel best represents your brand and current sound. But Rick, I'm unique. I sound different. Well, as much as people say they like different, they don't. Why is McDonald's the number one selling hamburger in the world? Whenever I'm on stage, I say, who thinks McDonald's got the best hamburger? No one raises their hand, but they are the best because it's familiar. So what you need to do is you think about it like this. And this is what I, I want you to think about. If you had a chance to open for an artist, who do you feel that your music would fit with their audience? And more importantly, that their audience is someone that you would like to get in front of. So go ahead and type that in the chat. Who do you feel already has your fan base? If you were to start a festival, and you wanted to surround yourself with bands. Now, these need to be famous bands so that we can go find their people. NF, okay. There you go, George. I love NF. Polo G, okay. So these are the people that already have your audience. So once you identify who they are, the next step is, is to join in on the conversation. And when the time is right, then you will mention that you are an artist or a musician. So what I like to do is this. I like to go to that person's Twitter, Instagram, and I want you to see, I like to use Twitter and Instagram for this. Who are the people that are number one? Let me just get rid of this real quick. Number one, who are the people that are commenting and sharing? The people who are commenting and sharing are more likely to be on their phone at that particular time. So how do we identify that? So what you see right now is you see Ariana Grande on the left. You're going to see her Twitter account. So if I'm looking for the engaged audience, the very first comment says the best rap news is on my story. Is that an engaged potential follower for you or somebody that you're going to want to interact with? Right. No, they're just basically spamming her feed. But the person that says, I love you the most, your energy, thank you for this precious song. Those are the engaged fans. It's important that we find the fans. Then the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to follow that person. Just follow. That's all I want you to do is just follow. And the reason for that is because these fans love it when they get new followers. How many of you like it when you get new followers? How many of you wait to see that little red dot show up in the heart on your Instagram to show that somebody has engaged or interacted with you? The fans especially love that. When they click on that dot and they see that you followed them, the first thing that they are going to do, and this has been proven, is they are going to go look at your profile. And if you have set your profile up properly, and that's something we focus a lot on in the course, they are going to know what type of artist you are. They're going to know right away if they want to get to know more about you. And the cool part is, is that big blue follow button is going to show up and there's going to be a chance for them to follow you back. So that's how you find the engaged fans on Instagram. On Twitter, I like to look for the people, as you can see, uh, the comment button, the people that are commenting once again. We go in and we follow them. You're not under the same rule restrictions with Twitter, so go follow them. They're going to get notified that they were followed. You're also looking for the people 
that the second thing I have circled here are the people that retweet. That's crucial. And the reason that that's crucial is that person feels confident sharing with someone else. How many of you have ever seen a movie and it wasn't that great? So obviously you didn't go on and share that with all your friends. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, this is the person that's saying, hey, I believe in this person enough to be able to share this. So we're looking for the people that are leaving comments and the people that are retweeting, which is actually sharing. So those are the people that we want to get in front of. Uh, just a reminder, there will be a replay of this. So if you missed any of this or if you joined us uh, late, welcome. If you're watching this on the replay, boom, boom, you're right here. So before I move on, do you understand how to find these engaged folks here? You're looking for the people that are leaving relevant comments and you're looking for people. And no, this isn't the same as follow for follow because we're not saying it used to be we would say, hey, follow me and I'll follow you back. We're not saying that anymore, okay? You're following them. They may or may not follow you back. When they do follow you back, those are the people that you want. The people that don't follow you back, there's ways to go in and say, okay, I followed this person eight days ago and they haven't followed back, so we just get rid of it, okay? So we just, we just unfollow them at that point. Not every single person is going to follow you back, but what you're looking for is you're looking for the quality, not the quantity. Does that make sense? You're looking for the quality of followers, not the quantity. I have artists right now making sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year with less than 1,000 fans. It is not about the number anymore. It's about the quality of the numbers. Everything that I'm going to be here teaching you today is to go out and search for the quality. All right, so here's something that <laughs> here's something that I don't want you to be. I don't want you to be this guy. This guy that comes in and tries to wait, that's me. Okay, yeah, don't be him. I don't want you to come in and try to crash the party. Hey, I'm Rick. I'm an artist. Check out my music. Tell me what you think. It's like, dude, we're not there yet in the relationship. Okay, we're not there yet. Not everyone is excited about your music as you're excited about your music. You wouldn't believe how many people, and I'm going to show you some things not to do here in a second, that the, all they do, it's like the rap guy. You just don't want to be that person. It is not going to benefit you. It's actually probably going to get you blocked from a lot of people. It's like if, they, if they're like, oh, here's this guy again, just sending his YouTube link to his video. I don't even know who this guy is. Ultimately, once again, they pay for the relationship. So let's start the relationship on, on the right foot and don't be him. All right. Don't be that guy. So before I move on to secret number two, are we good with secret number one? You're looking for the engaged followers, the people that are leaving comments, the people that are sharing, the people that are showing that they're really interested in what's going on with the music of the artist that you feel or artist that are most familiar with you that already have your audience. All right, perfect. Got ourselves a good group here. All right, secret number two. What social platforms do you need to be on in order to reach the music fans? Now, once again, there are more platforms than this. I am only going to share with you the ones that I'm using that I feel confident to speak on, okay? That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yes, Twitter is still very relevant, YouTube, and TikTok. So let's break them down individually. First thing is going to be Instagram. So what are the things that are going to help you get the most organic reach possible with Instagram? Videos, images, stories, live video, and reels. Okay. So the platform's goal, the platform being Instagram, their goal is to keep people on platform as long as possible. Instagram is very visual. So make sure that you're just not posting pictures without putting something cool in the comments that go along with the picture. Use all the real estate that they're giving you. Stories right now is the biggest gathering of people in the world. Okay. Stories are awesome. Stories. So your, your feed post, the post that goes on your feed, that may be something about your brand. That may be something 
you know, a, a cool image of your cover art or something. That's we're doing once a day. But in the stories, you're able to bring these people along on the journey and they're able to get to know more about you. So that's what's super important about that. Live video. When you go live, you get to bring people on. They're live with you. That is a major engagement opportunity. And whenever a platform releases something new, they are going to show favoritism to that. And the more people that use that new feature will get more reach. Instagram Reels is kind of their knockoff of TikTok. So, so you know, 15 second, 30 second, 45 second, one minute, short little videos, having fun, throwing all the different filters and stuff. Go ahead and try anything new that comes out. One of the things that I love inside of Instagram stories is the ability for you to put countdown timers. Countdown timers are great. Going live tomorrow at three, you can put the time. They get the opportunity to get a reminder notification. The reason that we like that is because when you go live, that little circle shows up on the home screen and you look up and you're like, wow, of all the people that I'm following, Instagram chose to show me who was going live. That's why that's important. For everyone who just has the uh, the circle that may have just done their story. Wow, of all the people that I'm following, Instagram is showing me who's being the most active. So you become the most active and you're going to show up across the top of the screen of the people that follow you. What I don't want you doing is in DMs the following. Just do not send a link of your YouTube video with no explanation to someone who doesn't know you. They'll block you. They'll report you. And it's not cool. That's not the best way to use that platform to build a relationship. Now, if you are wanting to go out and build relationships with industry folks, which I'm not opposed to that, don't do it this way. So this guy says, say, man, need your help. I'm like, great. Then go watch the free training, socialmediaformusic.com. It's the exact same training that I'm sharing with you right now. He says, can you produce me? I wrote, no, I'm not a producer. One day I'm going to do this shit and you be like, you should have helped me two way young and remember that bitch a N word. <laughs> okay. So first things first, one is you don't want Rick Barker producing your record Two, if someone's not able to help you and they give you a resource, your response should be, thank you. You are going to be judged by what happens afterwards. So if someone can't give you what you want, don't be that guy. Also two, false engagement. So billionaire here has 123,000 followers. He had only posted six times. So what I did is I went in to see, okay, man, I want to see what kind of followers this guy has. Well, what I noticed right away was the same guy leaving the emojis. That's an engagement group. Those are not real followers. There's no reason for me to want to get involved with old billionaire here because what he's showing me is that he's not relevant. He thinks he's showing us that he's relevant because he has 123,000 followers, but all of those people can be purchased. I want real stuff as should you. All right, next is Facebook, native post. What do I mean by native post? something that is uploaded directly into Facebook. You do not want to try to use Facebook to grow your YouTube channel. If people want to watch YouTube videos, they're going to go to YouTube. And Facebook does not want to send people away from the platform because they need you to see the ads. Once again, I'll do questions at the end. So if you can uh, save that to put into the Q&A box, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, videos. Videos do well. Why? It keeps people on platform. Live videos are awesome. Live videos allow you to utilize Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are as a venue. That is a worldwide venue for you to perform in front of a live audience. Venue or Live videos are absolutely amazing. And the consistency. Consistency is key. The reason that consistency is key is for discovery. When people show up to your platform. They'll usually show up there one time. Don't let them see that you haven't posted in a couple months. There's no reason for them to like your page or to follow your page if it looks like you don't show up, okay? So that's why we want consistency. Consistency with anything makes it better, whether it be health, whether it be relationships, whatever it is, and it's the same for social media. This is a non-negotiable. 
Okay. But Rick, I get more engagement on my personal page. Well, you want to be a business. You want to be a band. You need to have a fan page. All you do is go in, create page, type in the musician. It's going to show up, build yourself that page. That's also the only page that you can run ads from. And at some point, Sooner rather than later, you're going to want to start running ads. That's not what this presentation is about. I do have an ads course as well, but this is about building the organic traffic. But go ahead and get yourself set up with a fan page. Make sure that you use the available resources that are available for you there. Facebook now gives you the ability to drop links to your store. You can put images of your CDs, your T-shirts, and people can go buy merch from you. That's free real estate. Use it. When you're putting up some type of concert announcement, make it look awesome. Go use an app like Canva, C-A-N-V-A, Canva, and you can make, it'll size it out perfectly for you. You can put some cool backgrounds, but you want to look pro. You want to look professional. Live video, once again, allows you the ability to be seen. Like right now for Madison, one of my clients, she's had 5,000 views on this video. So that means she had the opportunity to perform for 5,000 people. Some of these are repeat offenders, but those that are repeat offenders have the ability, if you notice in the description, she's giving them the opportunity to go to her PayPal and her e-transfer. She's Canadian, so she's doing the e-transfer as well. And this gives fans the opportunity to be able to deliver funds to you, to help your cause. And we go over that a lot inside the course on live streaming, okay? The other thing about building these relationships the right way, let me explain to you what happened with Marty. So Marty came to me and Marty is in one of my more advanced courses and Marty had a huge YouTube following, but he wasn't monetizing it and he wasn't getting as many streams as he used to, even though he had over 100,000 followers, he still felt that he could be doing more. So he hired me, started working with me and I said, dude, let's take them from YouTube Let's do Facebook Lives. So we they love your cover videos. Let's go do those videos live. And then let's build an email list off of them. And with that, you have the ability to reach out and build better relationships. Okay. That's the power of taking them from platform to platform to someplace else. Okay. Once you have their email, they may not see every post, but they're going to get every email. Whether they open it or not, that's another story. We teach you how to do that inside the course. But what Marty did is he built this relationship and I started working with Marty on how to sell higher price tickets. So Marty sent this to me Easter of last year, about a year ago, he sent me this text. He said, made $4,300 on a live online show last night. I said, that's awesome, man. Hope everyone is safe. We're good, brother. Jesus is risen. Y'all good. He said, I wasn't bragging. I was just letting you know because you turned me on to doing actual online concerts. So thank you. I said, never see it as a brag. He has risen. Does anyone remember what was taking place around March and April of last year? Think about it. That's right, the pandemic. There was no tours going on. People were sitting at home. People were waiting to be entertained. The smart artists were entertaining. How many of you would be okay making $4,300 in a one hour show on Facebook? The answer should be yes from every single one of you. $4,300. Now, what's funny is that was the third show he did. I only worked with him to set up the first two shows. He did this on his own because once you have the knowledge, it's yours. It's what you do with that knowledge that separates the rest. This is the Bell Rays. They're a punk rock act. So they were screwed when COVID happened because they were doing four shows a week. They only made money when they were on the road. So Lisa in the front, Bob in the back, her husband, they're called the Bell Rays. They've been touring for 30 years. So in March last year, when all this went down, I started reminding my clients, remember what I told you about this. Now is the best time to do it. So Lisa writes me this big, long email I'm going to highlight some of the things she said. Our live shows have been uh, during the call time, so we've not been there. The live show she's referring to is they started doing one Instagram live a week and one Facebook live. We are still thriving before this new normal. If we were not on the road, we were not making money. Our online sales were little to nothing month to month. We had to go to the road to live. 
What's happening now from the advice that you gave all of us in March to go online and be there for your fans is we've hovered around 3,500 to 4,500 monthly income from a combination of donations to store sales. Now, someone had mentioned here uh, uh, about, uh, doesn't this look like a GoFund thing? It doesn't. It's all in the wording. And what I teach the artists that I work with, and I want you to write this down because you can use it word for word. Many of you have asked how you can help support me and my music because being an independent artist means I fund everything. So I put a link if you want to contribute. It's appreciated. If not, no big deal. Here's the next song. You don't harp on it. There's a, re there's a time to go do the GoFundMe thing. This is how would you like to support me? This is no different than them buying a ticket. This is no different than in, if you've been to Nashville. I know there's some Nashvillians here. When they toss around the, the tip bucket at these shows, these people, you have to give the people that want to give you money the opportunity to do so. Do not keep that a secret. People want to help you. I've got a young lady right now. Her name's Janelle. Janelle last month did $4,000. $3,000 came from one person. One guy over a period of three different live events that she was doing, donated over $3,000. She asked him, she says, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but I'm just curious. Why are you doing this? He says, I'll tell you why. He said, a friend of mine passed away three weeks ago. I found your music and it helped me. Your music helped me get through that. And I know that you're working hard by yourself. So I just wanted to make up for all the shows that I missed. Had she not given them the opportunity to do that. So not everyone is going to do it. Don't get on there and start begging. Nobody likes that, but you've got to give them the opportunity or you don't. It's completely up to you. I'm just showing you the results of people that got over it. The percentage of donations has started to out, uh, started out the main thing for March and April shifted to primarily store sales. The month of March store sales were $32, the end of June, $3,700. All right, now let's go to YouTube. The key to YouTube is you have to post covers. And the reason for that is not because your music's not great. It's a search engine. No one's searching for you yet. And I say yet. So we want to go do covers in your own style of music. We want to utilize the keywords. These are the things that people are searching for. And we want to use the description box to ultimately share links to where they can go back and hear your music. So this song is Anyone. It's a cover by Justin Bieber. Do you notice that she didn't even put her name inside the description? Why? Because it's irrelevant. That title is what people might be searching for. But what she did is she took the description box and that's where she started talking about herself, giving them a chance to get to know her. That is how you can use free real estate from the second largest search engine in the world. Don't be afraid to use these. They give you clickable links. This is all free resources to you. Take advantage of the fact that they are there. So here's the power of social media. When you do cover songs in your own style. Remember I showed you Marty Ray earlier? So Marty did a version of Vanilla Ice. If you want to go hear it after this presentation, go to Marty Ray Project on YouTube. Vanilla Ice fell in love with his version. Somebody shared it with him. Vanilla Ice then invited Marty to open up for him in concert. It all came from doing a cover. That cover had sat there for three years. Three years later, Vanilla Ice finds it. Three years later, Marty is on stage with Vanilla Ice. So don't be afraid to do covers. Just do them in your own style. So Twitter, images, hashtags are okay in Twitter. Find the relevant hashtags, whether it be Super Bowl, whether it be American Idol, wherever you feel the people are hanging out, that you can go get involved in the conversation. Follow the hashtags on Twitter. Jump in, see what's happening. Videos do really well on Twitter. A lot of uh, third world countries uh, don't have Instagram yet and don't have Facebook. Twitter is usually the first platform that comes on board in certain countries. So be OK there. You can schedule that stuff out. It's very link friendly. So if you want to use Twitter to send people to your YouTube channel, go for it. They're not going to penalize you for that. If you want to send them to your website, if you want to send them to Spotify, you have the ability to share links inside of Twitter. And when people are leaving you messages, that's a little bell notification. Go in and see who's talking about you 
and message them back. There's nothing worse than somebody saying, oh my gosh, I love your stuff. And then silence. Wasn't that awkward? Well, that's what happens when somebody gives you a compliment and you don't answer. It's like if you're with them in person and you just <laughs> sit there and stare at them and don't respond. Go message. They took the time to tell you they dug you. Take the time to respond back. That's what friends do. You want to ultimately get them into your world where they feel like a friend and they want to support. Also, too, on Twitter is there's opportunities to use these big banners and these resource pages. For example, the Springs uh, showed that, you know, hey, number 33 on the billboard chart. By the way, they're an independent act. Uh, they aren't signed to a label. They don't have a manager. They're part of my coaching program. But they did this by building up an audience where they were able to get them to do what they needed to do at the time they needed them to do it. As you notice, they have a lot of followers. They follow a lot of people back. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there was a time when people said, oh, you're the artist. You're up here. The audience is down here. Well, that's kind of bullshit in a relationship, don't you think? You know, we want to show them that we're uh, reachable, that we're approachable, that we respect the fact that they took the time to follow us and share our stuff. That's the most non-committal thing you can do and doesn't cost you anything to follow somebody back. So on Twitter, take advantage of that opportunity. There's also a cool new feature on Twitter and they're about to open up another one I'm waiting for, but this one allows you to leave voice messages and you can also type in a description. So if you're a hip, a hip hop artist, YouTube's not going to be a big play for you as a hip hop artist doing covers, but Twitter vocal could, you could drop your beat. You could, you know, you could freestyle, you could rhyme. All you do is go to the blue quill pin. It's going to open up that little waveform, click the waveform, hit record. And now you've got the ability. I think it's up to two minutes right now. And that's constantly changing. So you could even say something like, Hey, happy Monday. Just wanted to wish you a great Monday. Have a great day. Tell me what you're doing today. You could just say something. If you ask them a question, they're more than likely to respond, but that's one of the pro tips for Twitter. Some of the things that you don't want to do is tweet twice a month. There's no reason for you to be there. Don't leave your fans hanging. Once again, if they ask you a question, they give you a compliment, answer back. Don't abuse the hashtags. Use the hashtags that are relevant. Don't be so opinionated. What I mean by this, especially during political times, uh, most people aren't coming to you for political advice, religious advice. Nobody cares at that point, unless that's your brand where you know you do songs about politics or whatever the case may be. Also too, know that this is a digital footprint. You may, don't drunk and tweet. Don't get drunk and tweet. There are people right now that are being uh, fired from jobs from something that they did eight, nine, 10 years ago on social media. Be very careful. TikTok is very musician friendly. 60 second covers, you can do 60 second originals. It's the way to share your music on one of the biggest growing platforms. TikTok had a lot of growth uh, during COVID. It's still really hard to get people from TikTok to your other platforms. But hey, if you want to have a strategy, uh, you can go use the filters like Taylor Felt does here on the left. Uh, <clears throat> Sarah in the middle. I love Sarah. Sarah does what's called these POV point of view. So she'll be singing her song and then she's got little comments about the song popping up, not her lyrics. So Whatever platform you decide to use, spend time getting to know the platform, getting to understand its nuances. Uh, hashtags work really well on TikTok. You only get a couple of them, so you pick the right ones. And there's a great new feature called duets. Duets is where you can sing and then you can leave it and move the allow it to have duets and people can sing with you. My buddy Cato on the track uh, just got a record deal because he was posting his beats and letting people duet with them. And one of them went viral and one of them became, you know, the biggest shared video on TikTok. So that's a great place, <clears throat> excuse me, for hip hop artists, producers, beat makers. You know, if you want to go in and do an acoustic to leave room for people to sing, that's a great situation for you as well. Uh, here's one of the pro tips for TikTok. Give TikTok what TikTok wants. I made the mistake of trying to give TikTok what I thought I wanted to give TikTok, which were longer videos. The shorter videos work well. The choppy videos work well. Everything works the way that it's supposed to. I went out and had a guy teach me. And inside my course, I give you access to that video of him and I, him showing me how to do this. From the tips that he gave me, I went from 600 people to 1,800 people to over 7,000 people in a week. I had a video that went viral. 
Uh, I went to bed, it had 6,000 views. I woke up, it had 180,000 views. I played a round of golf, came back, it had 350,000. What it also did was increase the views on all of my other videos as well. I share step for step, tip for tip, what he showed me and I let you hear him coach me through that process. The cool part is you don't have to pay for what I paid in order to get that information. I share that with you inside the course. Secret number three is gonna be the automation. The system that I teach is how to get everything done in under an hour a day so that you can have more time doing what it is that you love, which is making music. So the way that we break this down is I want you to think of it like this, 15 minutes for breakfast, 15 minutes for lunch, 15 minutes for dinner, and 15 minutes for snacks. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that you're scheduling something that goes out in the morning. And it doesn't have to be on all the platforms. I'm more concerned with you finding the platform that you think your audience is at. If you want to be on multiple, great. But find the one that you can provide the most value to. Schedule it out. You can schedule Twitter. You can schedule uh, Instagram. You can schedule Facebook. You can schedule everything. In the lunch, in the dinner, in the snacks. Even take this time to go out. And that's when you're replying to comments. Uh, one of the things I love to do, and I teach a cool strategy is utilizing the voice DMs. Voice DMs are very powerful right now, but you just need to break it up into increments. Uh, the tips right now for scheduling is schedule out the night before if possible. Why? Because you're going to get busy. Okay, you're going to get very busy. So make sure you schedule out the night before. Keep folders of creative on your desktop and in your phone. If you have a whole bunch of pictures that you like, keep a file. If you have a couple of hashtags that you always use all the time, keep them in a file. You know, make them available, copy and paste, make it super easy for you to do this. Two of the apps that I like to use are Dropbox and the Note app. Okay, the Note app's gonna save you tons of times. Copy, paste, it rolls right in. Now, one of the things that I didn't share, but I'm gonna tell you this now too, is when you post on Instagram and it says, hey, would you also like to share this to your Facebook page? You're gonna go no. And the reason for that is that each platform speaks different languages. And the usernames may not be the same username that they have on Instagram, that they have on Facebook. So just copying and pasting, especially if you're tagging people, isn't going to work. And the hashtags don't carry across either. All right. So why are we posting every day? Does everybody remember the word I said earlier? Why are we posting every single day consistently? That's right. It's discovery. When people find you, we want them to see that you're relevant. When people find you, we want them to see that you're followable. When people find you, we want them to know that, hey, this is someone worth engaging and keeping an eye on because they are the ones that are active. So that's why we do it. It's to show them that you are legit. So if the power went out right now, if all of a sudden we had a storm in Nashville and the power went out, have you gotten at least one thing from me today that you didn't know before or something that you can put into action today? Was it worth spending this time with me today? Up to the power goes out. Are you cool with what I've given you up to this point so far? Okay. I always ask that question because it gives me a chance to get a drink of water too. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, cool. So here's a quick little bonus for you. You guys ready? All right. So there's this band called Council. Council came to me and Council wanted to figure out how to grow their Spotify followers and things like that. They really wanted to get more people listening to their music. So there's this cool little trick. Let me share it with you right now. What I want you to do, and this only works on phone, is you go into your Spotify account. You can also do this on Apple and on SoundCloud. And you can also share this kind of stuff elsewhere on Facebook and Twitter. But I'm going to show you the Instagram story hack because that's where the most people are at right now. So when you open it up, you click the three little dots next to your song, and it's going to open up where it says share. When you click share, you're going to touch Instagram stories. Okay. Instagram stories. What that's going to do now is it's going to open it up inside of your Instagram stories, and it's going to show whatever artwork is associated with your song. Then I want you to go up on the text and I call this remixing. Now you're going to go add something. Now this is going to be your music. Okay. I'm just giving you an example because I don't have music to share. So I'm using them as an example. 
you're going to write something about your song, the hook, okay? Something that's going to get them. And then you're also going to go in and you're going to tag yourself, okay? Then what happens is you see, it says your story play on Spotify. You can also take your finger and draw a cool little arrow if you want. But after you share it, it's going to be on their story. When they click go on Spotify, it's now going to open up in Spotify. And if it plays from zero to 31 seconds, that's when you get paid. It only counts as a stream or a play after 31 seconds. So you basically have taken your music to a platform where a whole bunch of people are hanging out and given them the opportunity to go hear your music on Spotify. And that will help you increase your Spotify streams. And every time it goes from zero to 31 seconds, you get paid. You should be sharing your music multiple times a day. Don't worry if people scroll past it. Give those that want the opportunity to hear it, to hear it. If you've got five or six songs, share five or six songs. Turn your Instagram stories into your own radio station. Lauren's like, cha-ching. Do you know how many artists do not share their own music every day, but they get pissed off when other people aren't playing it, when they're not even playing it. So take control of your business. This one tip right here, will all of a sudden you're going to see things grow. You're going to see more engagement and it's going to make all the difference in the world for you. So here's what you know by now. So by now you understand where to find your fans and what platforms to use to find and engage them. So by now you know what doing the right thing looks like and what doing things the wrong way looks like and you promise not to do them, correct? I showed you how getting on national charts is obtainable for indie artists. I showed you that with the Springs, number 33 on the Billboard charts. I shared my Spotify Instagram story hack to increase your plays, just shared you that with Council Band. I shared examples of indie artists just like you making a difference and making money. You saw from Marty Ray, you saw Peepo Beach, you saw the Bell Rays, you saw Ross, you saw Elliot, and I even showed you the exact same strategies that they're using as well. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, will I see results like this for my career? I can't promise you that. One, I don't know your work ethic or the quality of your music, but what I have shown you and how others who have followed my systems, they're having success with it. So why can't you? So the reality is this, everyone started at zero and had to put in the work. No one woke up with an audience. It takes commitment and it takes time. They did the work. The question is, and what you have to ask yourself is, will you do the work. So where else could you get information like this? There are courses out there that teach the individual socials. They usually run a couple hundred bucks to a couple thousand bucks. Uh, Berkeley, for example, you can get an online music marketing campaign strategy, social media and digital distribution uh, for 1500 bucks if you want credit for it or 1250 if you don't want credit. And basically they're teaching you their thoughts. They're not actually out there doing it every single day. So what is that one thing that I tell all my clients is essential to a successful music career? Remember at the beginning, I said, I'm going to share that one thing with you. It's one thing. It's called patience. Okay. Most people don't have patience. It's a very, very valuable word. Unfortunately, some people think patience means waiting for opportunities to come to them, waiting to be discovered. True patience means doing the work and investing the time and money in yourself to become prepared for those opportunities. So what does patience look like? The best example I have is a young lady by the name of Nicole. Nicole sent me this and she posted it in the Facebook community. So many people said I couldn't achieve my dream. Today, a major one came true. I just became a billboard charting artist at number 50 on the dance chart. Anyone who knows me knows I love dance music. My song Higher Than Heaven is number 50. I can't believe I'm on the same chart as Madonna, Lizzo, Sam Smith, Tiesto, and lots more. I couldn't be more grateful. The interesting thing about Nicole, Nicole hit number 50 on the charts. Nicole is older than that chart position. She actually got as high as number 39, and she's okay with me sharing this with you. She put in the work over years for this to be able to happen. But what she did is she had the systems in place to where we could get her audience to all pre-save and download at the same time, which allowed her to chart. It's just by having the strategies and more importantly, having the tactics to implement those strategies. Now, would you agree that if you master doing things in a way that doesn't take all day, plus your music starts generating income at a pace that you can't believe, would it be fair to say that your chance to finally live your life doing what you love is far higher? 
So here's a couple choices that you have. Choice one, you do nothing and you remain exactly where you are today. Choice number two is you take what I've shown you today, you do it and you'll be farther along than most. And I hope that you take everything. I hope you've taken notes. If you got here late, I hope you go back and watch the replay. If you're watching the replay now, I hope you pause this video uh, and, and took the notes that you needed. But here's the deal. It's gonna take a long time to learn and try everything. You're talking, I've been doing this for a long time. I've invested tens of thousands of dollars and thousands of hours learning all these strategies. What I always tell my clients is I'll go out and spend the big dollars so you don't have to, and then I'll bring it back and I'm able to teach you. But as we've also learned in this type of business, timing is everything. Now, choice number three is you have the ability to learn from me directly. You can get a hold of everything that I know at this point to help you build, nurture, and monetize your fan base. So what are the next steps? Our time's almost up today. And I've only had time to share the tip of the iceberg with you. There is no way that I can share everything that I know about social media and the time that we've had together today. And the time we've had together today, I focus just that on Instagram and some of these various platforms. But I want more. I want to be able to give you more. And with my proven systems and processes, I want to help you have your dream career. Now, who agrees that if you had me teach you and share with you everything that I know and everything that I'm doing, not only in my business, but with my clients, that it would be valuable to you right now. I love what Lauren says. I've got hand cramps from taking all these notes. And by the way, we will be doing a Q&A here in a second. So it's coming up real quick, I promise. That's why I'm very excited to offer you my social media for music training. I kind of talked about it a little bit in the beginning. Social media for music is everything that I know currently. It's everything that my clients are using currently. And more importantly, it's everything that you can start doing now. So just got these couple messages. I must say best information I've received and have paid for a lot of these types of courses in the past. Between tips and CD sales, I made $150 with all my pre-sales. I'm up to $400 in my PayPal and have already covered the cost of the CDs that I ordered. I bought your social media course and my life is much better. Two months ago, nobody knew I did music. Today, I have an audience who are engaging. So what is this going to cost? Because I want everyone to have access to the best knowledge available and the ability to learn from me directly and finally start making money and have the career of their dreams. If you act right now, I'm going to do this for you. Somebody already remembered. Yes, you're going to get everything for one payment of only $97. That's right. Lifetime access to this training for only 97 bucks. You're gonna save $150, normally it's 247, but I want you to have the same tools that Ross had. I want you to be able to realize that your career is worth 26 cents a day for a year. You're gonna get the best practices for each of the platforms. You're gonna get exclusive TikTok training that taught me how to go viral, how to create the content, I think it's super important that you understand that, how to schedule out and automate, how to monetize through live streaming. We have a whole section, the equipment, how to set up your PayPal links and things like that, the proper verbiage to make sure that it doesn't sound like you're begging, how to look professional with your website. I think it's super important that you understand that the website is the only thing that you own. We're going to make sure that that looks top notch. You're going to get access to the private Facebook community. And this is not like most Facebook communities. This is a comment only Facebook community. The reason that I do it this way is people stop going to Facebook groups because all it is is a bunch of spam. People just start trying to promote themselves all the time. This industry changes every day. Every day I listen to a podcast and I read articles. I share those articles inside the Facebook group. I want you to have the current changes that are happening. So that's why I've done it that way. And a lot of people have said, thank you, Rick. I've stopped going to a lot of the Facebook communities that I'm a part of because there's just nonsense going on. There's no nonsense going on in this Facebook group. I'm also going to give you the proper business setup to make sure that you understand how to get your music registered properly before you start promoting it. So like Elliot, you're not leaving money on the table. As of now, he's gotten and paid royalties that were owed to him that were rightfully his over $20,000. We're going to show you how to do that. And you also get discount pricing on each year's new program. So every year I do an updated course. And as an owner, you're going to get the ability to pre-order it. Uh, I'll share with you how this works. So in 2020, when I launched Social Media for Music 2020, the pre-order price for everyone who already had the program was $20. 
$20. This year, everyone who had the course in December, an email went out. If you would like to pre-order the course, $21. Next year, you got it. It'll be 22 bucks. So you get the opportunity to upgrade to the new course at a major discount. Once again, it's lifetime access for only $97. Now ask yourself this question. If all this did was give you the confidence you need to compete in the music business, would 26 cents a day be worth it? Was even double or triple your online engagement? Are you worth 26 cents a day for a year? Was land you on one major Spotify playlist? Be worth it. Was to make sure that you look pro. That when an industry person, playlist curator, PR person, venue owner, even your musical peers see your social profiles that they are impressed, would it be worth it? One last thing I want to share with you, and then we'll jump into the Q&A. So if you have a question, I want you to go type it into, it's going to be hard for me to track down all the chats stuff. So if you can put it into the q and I'll jump into there and I'll answer your questions. This was a great post to see. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. So much to be grateful for. Thank you, Rick, for all you've shared with us. Randall and I are super excited to share that our new Bhakti House Band album, Roots to Revolution, debuted at number five on the iTunes chart. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and experience. We've only put into practice a few of the things that you've taught us. The reason that this is exciting to me is because in order to chart on iTunes, someone had to buy. They built the relationship where people felt obligated to want to support them to go out and spend 10 bucks on their record. So first question that popped up is, will my strategies work with all genres of music? Yes. If your genre and your fan base is human and it's not like so small, yes. What I teach is how to build relationships. So it's very, uh, there's no one genre. There are certain genres uh, that do better than others because they have a bigger audience to pull from. But everything I teach and all the strategies work in all genres of music. What does lifetime access mean? Lifetime access means as long as you have access to the internet, you have the ability to get access to the trainings. Mm -hmm. Now, the training program that I use is called Kajabi, and it has an app. So you can get the training on your phone. You can get it on your desktop. You can also have it on an iPad. Social media changes so fast. Won't this all be out of date soon? Here's the cool part about a digital course. When things change this year, I do updates throughout the year. I'm also going to be giving you the most up-to-date strategies inside the Facebook group. So I will stay focused on what the changes are so you don't have to, and I will make sure that you are aware of it. So let me go in and start answering some of your questions. Yes. Would you recommend reaching out to labels and managers via LinkedIn? No. Uh how does one realistically keep up with all the social media platforms? Like what I shared, Junimon, you just got to pick the ones that are right for you. You don't have to figure out where your audience is, start your focus there, and then you can start adding on platforms later, but stay focused with where your audience is. Uh, how important is it to get press? It's not. Uh, with press, think about what it is you're trying to do. You're trying to get people to like what you hear, like what you say, so that they go check out your music. Well, we don't know. The reason that I don't like that is because you're paying and you never know who the people are that saw it. When people interact with you on social, you have the ability to interact back. And press is good at certain points, but you've got to have a story that's so outrageous that people are like, oh my gosh, we got to tell that story. Uh, what is your rate for a one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, my rates for one-on-one, -on -one, uh, first off, they're only available. I have five hours a week that my clients, and even if you come in at the you know $97 level or whether you're in my $4,000 a year coaching program, uh, you are the only people that have access to buy my time. I block them in half hour blocks and it's $150 for a half hour, uh, less than a vocal lesson. Uh, where can I find the replay? You're gonna find it sent to your email. Uh, how many re repeats of sharing your songs likes become spammy? The thing is, is it's not spammy because it's on your page. So you're on your page. It's not like you're spamming it on their page. If they choose to look at it, they can go through. So the way that I like to break that up, and Aaron, that's a great question, is we, we got to remember what social was designed for. They, it's about them. A lot of times I share reels. I go in and find things that make me laugh, whether it be animals or babies or somebody doing something stupid, and I'll share that into my story and I'll 
I'll type something of why it made me laugh and I get just as much engagement. The reason that we're doing multiple times in the stories is so that we show up at the top of their feed. So maybe a song, a couple of things to make them laugh, maybe a quote, maybe something you saw that you want to share. But if you just stacked it with all of your music, yeah, that would seem kind of weird. So just judge it out. But every day you should be sharing your most current single, especially. But sometimes you can go back and you can say, have, it, have you ever experienced heartbreak? This song was written about that. Then you share your heartbreak song. Even if it was a couple years old, you got to remember your material is brand new to someone every single day. It may be old to you, but it's new to them. I hope that made sense there. How many songs should you at least have to be of any interest? It's not really about the number of songs. It's like the thing that you got to remember, Menno, is that when they discover you and they like you, they're going to want to see other stuff. So get yourself a handful, you know, get yourself out there. You can be also, depending on your style of music, guitar vocals, piano vocals, freestyle, whatever the case may be. Content is content. But at some point, you may want to focus on while you're following a bunch of people. That's when you're also working on your audience so that you can get them excited. You can bring them in the studio. They can see the process. They can see what's happening and feel like they were a part of that process. Let me go ahead and welcome some people that are coming in. Ruth, welcome. Excited that you're here. Homer, welcome. Uh, Wilburn, welcome. Kelly, Maurice, Donna, Robin. Thank you guys. Excited to have you here. How can I do paid stuff if I'm under 18? I don't know what that means. Uh, do you have any advice or experience about creating NFTs? Not at this time. I just did a podcast episode on it. But what you're going to want to do is you better have an audience if you're going to start trying to do NFTs. Uh, go listen to the podcast episode. It would be great. After paying $97, are there more products for sale inside or is this access to all types of content? What that $97 is for is for the Social Media for Music program. You're also going to be given the opportunity if you want to pick up my ads course at a discount, you can do that. Uh, there, there are other programs that I offer. This is just the social media program that I shared with you, everything that was in it. Uh, would you mind to take a look at my Instagram? Uh, I don't look at uh, Instagram from here, Emmanuel, but I do. It's going to be a surprise. It's an unannounced bonus is I do online audits where once a month you have the ability to submit your website and your socials and I go in and I critique them. So that happens inside the course. Thank you, Rick. My question is, I know how to sing, but I don't know how to play instruments and don't know much about music production. So if I register, will you teach us that too? No, I do not teach that in the social media portion of the course, uh, but there are a lot of great people that teach songwriting and also teach instruments. Uh, if you go to the resources page on my website, rickbarker.com forward slash resources, there's some cool free resources there. Can this work for old guys like me that can still perform? Uh, yes, BJ, if your music doesn't suck. Uh, do I get discs or do I have downloads? Uh, you, this is not a digital. The reason that I'm able to sell it for $97 is because it's all online. Uh, it's, it's all, you stream it. It's right there, right on your phone. So it's not discs, uh, that's right there. Do you know, do you show in the course also strategies, for example, is getting in touch with curators? Uh, no, I don't. But I do have a YouTube video on that. There's a great, uh, and, well, yes, I do. So Christos, there's, there's a, a, a thing called the Indie Streaming Bible. I talk about that inside the course and how to reach out to curators. Uh, and it's, I think, like $50. Uh, is what that costs, but it's a directory of everybody broken up into genres. So yes, I do talk about that in there. What if I'm able to access Facebook to get in to the private group? Any alternatives? No. Uh, the Facebook group is the Facebook group. Is it still worthy to send emails to bloggers? Uh, Calvin, that's a strategy. Uh, I'm not going to really talk about that. I'm more concerned about helping you guys with this. I, I like social media. This isn't about how to get a hold of bloggers. Uh, think about the last time you read a blog and when you discovered an artist from a blog. Is there a way for more of your followers to look at your stories? Uh, yes, uh, you need to run ads to get them. You run that story in an ad. Radio, how important is it to get interviewed and played? It's not. Uh, what is the name of your Facebook group? It doesn't matter. You'll get an invite to it. The only people that get in it are the people that purchase the course. Uh, do you think major labels will become obsolete? I do not. 
Uh, I mean, if like getting donations and under 18, you can't have PayPal. Then get your parents to create a PayPal account and make sure that they give you the money that you earn. Uh, let's see. Are your strategies also for underground music? Uh, yeah, it's for all music. Uh, so it's the thing is you're going to buy, be wanting to focus on an audience that's into underground music. So yeah, it's, it, they're very helpful for that. What do you think is the ideal number of singles to be released before releasing a few, full album? Uh, I don't. I, we're in a singles-based world right now, Ricardo. The questions that I want to be able to answer for you guys are more related to, is this the right course for you right now? Uh, if you've got questions about the business, um, I do Q and A's on Instagram every now and then, but I want to be respectful of the people that are here to find out about the course course. Is it worth getting in touch, uh, on music Ray about upcoming? Uh, I don't, you, you need to post on your socials about what you've got going on and what you've got coming up. Uh, if that's a place where you can go leave a message, I would do that. Uh, thanks, Steve. And I appreciate you. Uh, or Steve. Uh, running ads on IG, how important is it to target similar to you? Very. Uh, we have a whole course on that. Does your course teach you how to copyright your music? Yes. Uh, you're welcome, Clef. Uh, so after I get those followers on Instagram, how should I engage them besides stories? We teach all of that inside of the course. So once again, uh, it has been a pleasure to serve you. Uh, Justin, let me bring you up here real quick. Anything you got to say? Anything that stuck out to you? Did you learn anything? Yeah, I thought everything was fantastic. And I know that a lot of people that, uh, I mean, everybody that was on here clearly had a great, you know, got a lot of value out of this. I think that all the insights that you provided were incredibly helpful. I really appreciate you sharing those with us, especially some of that stuff that, you know, a lot of those uh, things that you had mentioned about, you know, how to, you know, post your Spotify to um, your Instagram stories to get your Instagram followers over to Spotify, because that can be a real challenge sometimes in, you know, getting people from one platform to another. So I thought that was some really valuable information. Real also, quick, every- let me say welcome to Aaron, Efron, Rashawn, Lars, and Ruth. Welcome. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you guys. and glad you're here. Awesome. Yeah. Everybody that uh, signed up, I actually purchased uh, Rick's course, uh, social media program a couple of years ago, and I went through it and everything and there's fantastic. So, um, I haven't been through the more recent version, but I'm sure that, you know, if what we covered here today, everything that uh, we learned here today is any indicator of what's in the 2021 version, I'm sure you guys are absolutely going to love it. And, uh, you couldn't have spent your money, uh, any better. On- well, and the thing that the difference between this year and last year's is the fact that I did it more in a workshop style. Uh, What I did is everybody who pre-ordered got a chance to come in and I taught each of the best practices in front of a live audience, which was nice. And I also included the interaction, the Q and a part, because I knew people would also have questions. Uh, Let me go in real quick and see if there's a couple other questions here real quick. Do we need a code to get the special price? No. And you'll get it for $97. Uh, if you try to go buy it on my website, it'll cost you $247 So take advantage of the fact that you're part of the community here and that you saw this offer. So yeah, only people on this can go get it for 97 bucks. Listen, you guys have been awesome. Justin, thank you again, uh, for doing hey, this. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for, uh, spending your time with us. And you've really shared a lot of super valuable knowledge that I know clearly everybody's got a lot out of this. So I appreciate well, and you guys will get the replay. So what will happen? is tonight I'm going to send Justin the replay so that he can upload it to YouTube. And then he'll also send out a link inside of uh, by email tomorrow. So I'll make sure that you've got this. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. You're welcome. No, I appreciate you guys. And oh, hold on real quick. A lot of stuff's happened in the last few minutes. So let me give... Ashley Christos, welcome. Appreciate you guys. Awesome. All right, listen, you guys have yourself a great one. We'll talk soon. Justin, thank you again. I appreciate you and you guys go have a great rest of your day and take your notes and do me a favor. Action, action, action. Put this stuff into action, all right? And the replay will come out sometime tonight. So don't worry. Every So what I'll do, everybody who signed up through Zoom, I'll also send you a replay. 
And then Justin will also send it out tomorrow to his list for the people that didn't make it. So you may get two copy, two emails about it, but I'll make sure that one at least goes out tonight. Uh, I'll have that for you. I've got a bail here, but I'll be back home uh, in a few hours. And when I get that, I'll upload it and get you all squared away. All right, guys and gals. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate you, brother. All right. Take Thanks, care. Rick. Bye-bye.